breathe here, don't look that way, um, cross this way, whatever it may be, or that note's incorrect, um, you know, please let that never ever be the case. Um. <laughs> Hello, Chelsea Melcher here. Today we are going to talk about the truth about what it's really like to have a contract. Here's my five top truths about once you get a role, what that really is like. First, why is this important? Even if you're not wanting to go into this professionally, I haven't met a single person who doesn't want to behave themselves in a professional manner when they are interested in the arts because you have a desire to learn and a desire to grow and just do the best that you can and obviously you love it so you probably are going out for roles and you're hoping to to get future roles and opportunities and so these are some truths about what it's really like some of the expectations and my process for how i go about that number one show up to the first rehearsal completely off book. A lot of times the process is I get asked to do something maybe nine months, a year, even more than that sometimes in advance. And with that, I have a contract. And part of that is me just being like, okay, I'm committed to you. And so contracts are something that's ha that happens in all sorts of organizations and companies because it's really important to have something written down that says that you are committed because a lot of things come up in life. And especially with artists and musicians, there's a lot of things that get changed, a lot of things that get canceled on you. And so that's your commitment. And so. I will show up to my first rehearsal, regardless of whether it says this in the contract or not. I always show up off book because I'm not there to learn the notes. I don't need somebody to teach me the notes. I don't need somebody to teach me the part. I'm there to discover what the concept is of the director and of the music director. I'm there to work with the stage director and the coach and the conductor. And I'm there to write in with my score and my pencil breath marks. This concept, that concept, think about it this way. And so I can't do that if I'm still trying to figure out what the what everything is. So memorized first time all the time. And even if there's something that I'm given with without very much notice or I have to jump in for something, sometimes it'll be like a week notice. And okay, still off book. I mean, unless it's some random opportunity where you're asked to jump in for something that you had no idea and you're reading the score pretty much on the stage, that would be an exception. But other than that, you show up memorized. Number two, record all of the rehearsals, especially if this is something where you're working on one of your solo parts or you're working on something where the conductor is doing it and you're trying to get a feel for the tempo for the first time, or this is the Zitz Probe. This is where you do it with the orchestra for the first time. Record it because there are so many things that you won't be able to pick up in the moment because you're trying to stay focused and you're trying to really just do your best. and you have to have them as notes. I will listen to any rehearsals where I'm doing specific things and there are always, 100% of the time, always things that I missed in that moment. And so I have that recording and then I'm able to play it on my drive home or I'm able to play it that night or the next morning and make some notes of, of things that I wasn't able to before. So that's something that when I go into a rehearsal where I'm with professionals, everyone has their phone out recording. But the, also another thing is the phones are not being used because we all are interested in the process. We all are interested in even if the conductor is talking to somebody else over there, I'm paying attention because it might apply to me in some way or it helps me get to know exactly what he's looking for more. And so because we're all in this together. And so when we have a rehearsal together, phones are on because they're being recorded but we're not like on our phones doing other things and getting unfocused and things like that i actually had a conductor once that chewed somebody out because they that we were doing something it had nothing to do with them but we were all sitting in chairs and he was there conducting there was a there was a rehearsal pianist and we were going through things and somebody else was on their phone just doing something completely quiet and this conductor 
he almost, <laughs> he chewed them out. He almost probably threw them out of the show because he was super, super upset. But that's just something to, to realize is that you are expected to be present. You're expected to understand the concept of the show and what's going on. Number three, you're always auditioning. There are so many times where it's very transparent, especially being on the other end of things. Now that I am a teacher, I'm a director, and oftentimes I will be on the other side of auditions. And it's very transparent when there are students that they realize that auditions are coming up. And so then they put their best behavior on right before that. And it's not a bad thing to be on your best behavior and better late than never, but you're always auditioning all year round in every interaction and in every conversation that you have. How do you present yourself? It's really important to me that I behave in a way where I have a lot of kindness. I have a lot of care for other people and what's going on in their lives. And that's something that is is recognized in my in my characterizations and that's something where i like having deep relationships i like having friendships and so that's something where all year round i'm not just going to reach out to people when i'm like oh there's an opportunity that could be there for me um i genuinely care and so that's something that i make sure to try to the people that are important in my life i really really try to make sure that I have a wonderful relationship with them throughout the year and, and not just like, oh, here's a director, let me like reach out and blah, 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 blah. Um, so that's really, really important that in every way that you show up and in previous things that you've done, if you've gotten a, an opportunity and maybe it's potted plant number three, well, how do you show up? Are you on time for those rehearsals? Do you, are you committed to the show? Do you act like you genuinely care and are doing a good job? Because you never know the next thing that may be your thing to absolutely feature you. And just because you're potted plant number three in one production doesn't mean that you're not talented. And it doesn't mean that there's something that could be coming up next for you, especially if you show up in a way where you're really impressed on the other side of things. Sometimes there'll be a, an instance where we've cast something and somebody doesn't have a lead or they're a chorus part and they really catch my eye because they're there, they're present, they're working hard, they're taking notes. And then there are some times where I'm like, how can I create an opportunity to feature them? Because I'm so impressed by them. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure I'm not the only director that thinks that way. Number four, never be given the same note twice. I am always there with a pencil. If I am given a note, whether it's breathe here, don't look that way, um, cross this way, whatever it may be, or that note's incorrect, um, you know, please let that never ever be the case. Um, God forbid with me, but um, um, that's something I'm so anal about is making sure every single note is exactly correct in, in all of my entrances and things. I am very OCD about that type of thing. But if I am ever given a note in that regard or any regard, I write it down and I make sure it's at the forefront of my mind because my director is they don't have time. They don't have the time of day. They say one thing to me, it is my responsibility and my job to remember it every single time from then on. They should never have to tell me twice. They should never have to say, what part um, What part did I put you on for that? And then I'm like, oh, I don't remember. What part did you put on me? You know, that's my job. And that's, that's something that I also am trying to work with my students, especially students um, that are older in some of the Broadway classes that we have. It's kind of like, oh, I told you that once, make sure you write that down so that I don't have to tell you that again, because that just shows one, you care, two, you're listening, three, you're smart enough to realize that somebody is not gonna wanna have to, to take the time to give you a repetition of the same notes because it's annoying to them and it makes the whole process and the whole company at a, a lower level. So don't waste everybody's time. Don't waste your time, don't waste their time. Lastly, covers. Covers are something that growing up in a small town, we didn't have. And there were there were plenty of opportunities in my small town. And right now I currently am also living in what I would consider a small town. And there is there hasn't really been a whole lot of opportunities for covers in the past. And that's something that um, 
we we started doing at at red is is doing covers and even sometimes double casting and covers are are such a wonderful thing and i've been covers for things so many times i've had so many contracts and it's it's a wonderful learning opportunity and it doesn't mean that you have to have a performance for that because there are roles where i learned an entire role and in, like i'm talking like a lead role two and a half long show um english foreign languages you name it all of these things and for me learning that repertoire was awesome enough because i had some sort of accountability if i could go back and change things i would just learn so many more songs as fast as i could instead of just taking my time with things and so it that's a wonderful thing about a cover is that there's an accountability where you get to learn an entire new role um and then also it's exciting because you're not the one that's going through all the motions in the rehearsal, yet you're there and you're watching and you are ready because at any moment, boom, she's sick, boom, broke her ankle, boom, vocal rest today, you're up. Okay, you have to be ready. And that's an amazing opportunity for you to also show what you've got because the directors are gonna be watching you. Like, is she ready? Does she know her stuff? And with that, I mean, who knows? Then all of a sudden you might come out of the woodwork, really impress them, and then guess who's gonna get a lead next time? Guess who's gonna be featured next time? Guess who might even have opportunities created for them because they were so well prepared? Being a cover is awesome. And there's been, there's been a handful of times when I've been a cover and have had to go on. There's been a handful of times when I've been a cover and never had a performance for it. And I'm just like, whatever, it's cool. And it's also, it's it's cool because you can put it on your resume too. You learned a whole entire role and you were performance ready. That means something. That shows your work ethic as well, which is, which is really, really cool. Bonus, calendars. So any sort of situation where I have a contract, I'm looking ahead at my calendars. And this is something that students especially can struggle with just because oftentimes you can have so many things. Maybe you're in um, an organization and you're in sports and you're in school and you have extracurriculars of all these things. However, it is so crucial and so your responsibility to make sure that you look, you're like, okay, I'm gonna see what days these rehearsals are on. Let me look at this entire rehearsal period, my entire calendar, what possibly could get in the way? What do I need to clear? What do I need to put? Um, if, if you have an audition form and you're putting the things that are conflicts, making sure every single thing is on there because that helps them, that helps them plan. What does not help them plan is a last minute thing. And in reality, if you wanna know the truth, if there was a situation where it was like a last minute, I'd probably get fired. I would never do that. And there's a lot of leeway that can be given sometimes, and I think too much. But all, all of that being said, it's really important to take responsibility as an adult, as a parent, as a performer to say, okay, let's look at all the calendar. Let's make sure that we're putting all of this down and communicating it in writing. Anything that is like a verbally said, Mm -mm. Got no time for that. There are so many conversations that I'll have with students or parents and I'll be like, yeah, that needs to be written down or else I'm not going to remember that because there's too much. There's too much. I got two toddlers. We're running our own business. Uh, we're performing. We're trying to manage life in their school and their activities and our things and events and concerts. And it's just too much. There's no way. I can't even remember what I need on my grocery list, right? I have to have it written down. And the same thing, any time that you have something of any importance with someone, write it down and, and make sure to send that to them. If you're on the performer side, if you're on the director side, it's just a common courtesy. It's also expected. It's your responsibility. And it's just the professional way to handle things is having a written documentation of some sort. So. That's what I have, all the, the, the truths, the top, my top five truths of what it really is like to do that and my process of when I get a role, what do I do? 
memorize it right off the bat. That's probably my number one. I want to make sure to drive that home. You walk in with your notes learned and memorized and ready to go because it's only at that time that you can take something from here and take it completely to the next level, which sometimes you can never discover if you're just thinking about what note you're supposed to be singing. There is a whole magical, magical world of more. So it's just at your fingertips. All right, let's go. Let's go kick some butt. I want you to imagine what it would be like if you had so much focus, so much zen, so much peace, so much calmness, and so much excitement at the same time before performance. As in, like, you're not getting in your head, you're not freaking out, you're not becoming a basket case, or you're not a hot mess. So if you feel like sometimes that is you, imagine what it would feel like if that wasn't the case, if that wasn't a problem anymore. It would be pretty awesome, right? So. What is the first step to that? Working with your mindset. So if this is something that's of interest to you, I recommend going to stopcaringwhatthethink.com. If you're a performer and you wanna have more confidence, if you wanna get out of your head, these are tips and tricks that I'm offering to you for free. It's a free resource that can help you have more confidence to manage that anxiety and just to feel like you can enjoy life again. You can enjoy performing. That's what it's all about, right? So stopcaringwhatthethink.com. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. I post new videos every Wednesday and a new podcast every Friday. Thanks.